What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. And it is early, but we got a little treat for you today. Matt and I are going fishing. Not gonna tell you what we're doing yet, but come along, should be fun. <laughs> Big old drum. On your own with that train wreck. <laughs> I want to show him to the camera, but it's gonna be. You'll get him. <laughs> get the size of this dude. <laughs> Can't even hold him. He's gonna weigh like. Twenty pounds. There we go. See you, dude. All right, guys. So, like I said, the intro. A little surprise for you. Matt and I are actually fishing for striper. Throwing swim baits. Flukes, top waters, and uh, you never know what you're gonna catch. That was like a 15 to 20 pound drum. He was big. But uh, hopefully, we'll get some big old stripers. Huh? Dude, he smoked that thing. I bet he did. Not nearly as big. This is only like dude, <laughs> slimy. Poor man smallmouth, I guess. Thanks. 
buddy. At the end of the day, a bite is a bite and they're absolutely clobbering. This one's all messed up now, but this is the four inch Largo shad on a Matt Allen swim bait head. Just swimming it on bottom. Hopefully one of these bites will be a big old striper or a big smallmouth or something. That's what's cool about fishing these tail races. You never know what you're gonna catch. We've caught sturgeon and striper and catfish and drum and what else have we caught on these things? Me today, nothing. <laughs> Not even a bite. It's a good day. Well, the camera wasn't running. That right there is a skipjack herring. That's what the giant striper eat. Got him on a weighted super fluke. Oh, dude. with the with the up. <laughs> Can you net him for me? Yep. He's not a giant, but I'll take him. Whoa. Oh, it is a giant. Hello, friend. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, dude. <laughs> Woo! Go? Yeah. Oh, I got the net. Yeah, I got the net through. Oh, man. <laughs> Just all slaughtered. That. Look at the gut on this striper. That's why you get up early that's, and come out, huh? That's why you get up early right there. That is so awesome. Thank you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, we've been throwing a variety of baits. But just tied that guy on. You know how much I love that bait. It's on the X Pride eight foot extra, extra heavy. When they redid the X Prides, I was so pumped to see an actual swim bait rod in the lineup, a dedicated swim bait rod. Man, that was fun. be a burrito kind of a morning looking like that it's a drum <laughs> that might be I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that net now oh, oh he's off that might be bigger than what I thought that was a giant drum
switched over to a Kaita. Add another species to the list. <laughs> Little white bass. We've got really weird conditions today. Tim mentioned we're fishing a tail race. Obviously you can see the dam. When you fish these areas, it's all about flow. It's all about current, current seams, how much water's moving. And when we got here today, there's zero. No pumps running. It's a pond. I mean, it is, it is literally worst case scenario. And that's why you see us kind of scrambling, throwing a variety of baits and just enjoying whatever we catch. I'm really pumped about getting a great big striper especially given the conditions but i mean we'd be happy with little white bass or have a large mouth wanted to bite or a skipjack right we'll take whatever we can get when there's no flow but we're using some of these downsized presentations to get those fish like i'm all the way down this isn't even a matt allen head this is a tactical finesse head just to get some bites given our conditions Another white. It's funny how they come in waves, isn't it? Or maybe it's just because I went to that smaller kayak. That's a good white right there. That. You want a man on? <laughs> I'm in good shape.
started off hot. Then I listened to this guy. He's like, oh, why don't you pick up this bait? And then <laughs> I put down the bait that was catching him. It worked the out shad. perfectly, didn't it? Yeah. All of a sudden, I look over, and he's like three fish in throwing a little swim bait. So don't fall for that trick when you're catching them and your buddy's not. <laughs> That's not a white. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> submarine. You're on, you're on. I'm gonna get my thumb broken now, yeah, this one. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. You're going back to the big one? Yeah. Weren't you missing like 98% of your bites on that? No, but I got so many more bites. I mean, I literally just put it on and got bit on my first cast and broke off. Oh, got it. No, that's what you were throwing. Drum. <laughs> no, no, no. Ow. These guys. I can see on Mega Live up against this dam wall. You can see the bait is being pushed. You can scan back and forth and see the, the fish blown up through the balls. So what Matt's been doing and what, what I just did was throw up in there and just let this bait swim down as close to the wall as possible. You have to be kind of be right on the wall. And just semi-tight line, let it fall, and you'll either see your line jump or you'll fill the bite. Sometimes it's mushy, but uh, those fish are just sitting there. They had the bait pinned against the wall, and as your bait falls down, they're picking up on the fall. Yikes. Coming in hot. <laughs> Coming in hot. Dude, that's a big shad. That's what they're eating. Drum. <laughs> Got a good one? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> So even though we're not catching striper or smallmouth or largemouth, <coughs> catching big old drum, this technique still works on bridge pilings, obviously dams. 
spotted bass like to hang right on bridge pilings. You can be over 200 feet of water and you can do the same thing. The key with it is getting right up on the structure, right on that piling, right on the wall. Dude, this guy's straight up got it. The key is getting right up on that wall and having a big enough head that it falls fairly quickly. You're getting like a reaction bite. You don't want it to fall too slow. But uh, you're literally just thumbing that spool and letting it free fall. And you'll you'll either fill the tick, like I said earlier, or, or uh, just load up. That one just felt a little subtle tick. And what was that, like a 15 pound drum? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. <laughs> Nasty, but uh, even though we're not catching bass, all these techniques still apply. the drum hole. Oh jeez. Let's see. That's a bulldog. Jeez. This guy's bigger than the last one. Come here. <laughs> this thing's pull so hard. All right guys, we're gonna call it an early morning. So uh, Matt had uh, had a little trip to the dermatologist yesterday and had some stuff burned off his face. So don't wanna put him in the sun. So that's why we did this early morning uh, adventure. Got one really nice striper. Unfortunately, it was Matt and not myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, we came, we came ready, right? 10 inch mag draft. 8 inch mag draft, the burrito, you know we have this game plan and it all revolves around current flow and we get here this morning and there's zero, it, like Matt said earlier it's like a pond so we had to adapt. You know right off the bat I started catching fish, I don't even have one tied on anymore but on the Largo Shad paired up with a swim bait head uh, catching Get a lot of bites, but catching some big drum. And a lot of times you can catch the big striper, big small mouth, large mouth mixed in with the drum, but uh, today just wasn't the day. Uh, and then, Matt, I don't know what you said, but he convinced me to uh, throw something different. <laughs> you have a chicken size up, do you? Yeah. Do that. Belly treble. You'll hook all of these. You have a chicken size up, do you? Yeah. Do that. Belly treble. You'll hook all of these. <laughs> and I went on a drought, man. It's I, like magic. Yeah, right after I caught those two fish and he was talking about how he hadn't been bit, and I said it was a good day, my day just stopped and he caught, I don't know, eight or 10 or so whites and that really nice striper. The cool thing about the striper was 
Uh, hopefully it's in the video, but it blew up twice right in front of us. We don't know if it was two fish or the same fish, and he led it with that burrito. And I think it was your first cast with the burrito and smoked it. So uh, fish was super tall. Wasn't the longest fish, but she was girthy. fat. Definitely been feeding up. But uh, anyways, great day out on the water. Few, few hours, couple hours, I guess. Um, really had to downsize. Like we talked about in those last few fish catches, we had to downsize, go with that little Kai Tech 3.8, 4.3, little bit larger head and just feeding it on the wall. You're almost like vertically fishing it, you're free spooling it, thumbing it as you, the bait's falling. Sometimes it'll get hung up on the, on the cement, but you just kind of pop it off and walk it down and you know, they'll, they'll smack it or you'll see your line jump. And uh, like I said earlier, all the different species eat that way. So if you're on a highland reservoir that has big bridge pilings, it doesn't matter if you're over 200 feet of water, those big spotted bass and smallmouth, largemouth will suspend right on that, uh, that cement wall. Not sure if the camera's working because it looked like it froze, but all in all, a great day. Guys, we'll link everything down below in the video description. Um, I mean, I even had top water tied on. That's that big shower blows. Matt started off, I think, with a scrounger, and that's a Scottsboro. But just like every video, we'll link our, our favorite baits down below in the video description and then the baits that we actually caught fish on. But uh, all in all, great, great couple hours to get out with Matt, catch some fish. Like I said, unfortunately, um, he caught the big striper and I didn't, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's a win. Anytime one of us can catch a good fish, it's a win for both. So uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you on the next video.